History of my oldest ancestors of whom I am very proud to send. July 11, 969, dies in Kiev, St. Olga, Princess of Kiev, my 35th grandmother, six times my grandmother, daughter of Oleg I, Grand Duke of Kiev, character who appears in the sixth season of the television series Vikings. Saint Olga was the first saint from the Kingdom of Kiev included in the Byzantine Catholic calendar, she is considered the link between pagan and Christian times in the history of Slavic populations. Saint Olga, Princess of Kiev, born in Pleskov, in 890 and died in Kiev, on July 11, 969, was the daughter of Oleg I, Grand Duke of Kiev, brother of Rurik I, Prince of Novorod, paternal granddaughter of Godoslav and Umela. Olga Princess of Kiev of Varangian origin, the Varangians were Vikings who moved, from the 11th to the 12th century, to the east and south of their land of origin, Scandinavia, following the course of the rivers of Eastern Europe and settling in the territory occupied by present-day Ukraine, Belarus and a part of Russia, and eventually reaching Jerusalem, Constantinople and Baghdad. Saint Olga, Princess of Kiev was regent of Kievan Rus, or Kievan Rus, for her son Sviatoslav from 945 to 960. After her baptism, Olga took the name Helen. Olga is known for subduing the Drevlians, a tribe of Slavs, who savagely murdered her husband and cousin Igor I, Grand Duke of Kiev. Olga is considered as the converter of Kievan Rus to Christianity, and is venerated as a saint in the Eastern Orthodox and Catholic Church with the epithet equal to the Apostles, and her feast day is celebrated on July 11. Saint Olga of Kiev was the first saint from the Kingdom of Kievan Rus included in the Byzantine Catholic calendar, and is considered the link between the pagan and Christian eras in the history of Slavic populations. The sources that cite her are numerous and all of historical relevance. Biography Youth Although the date of birth of Saint Olga is unknown, probably in 890, Olga was of Varegian origin and, according to the primary chronicle, was born in Pleskov, was the daughter of Oleg I, Grand Duke of Kiev, brother of Rurik I, Prince of Novorod, who was a character in the sixth season of the series Vikings. Little is known about her life before her marriage to her cousin, Prince Igor I of Kiev, son of Rurik I, Prince of Novorod and of Efanda, my 36th grandparents, six times my grandparents, and the birth of her son, Sviatoslav. According to Alexei Karpov, an expert on ancient Russian history, Olga was no more than 15 years old at the time of her marriage. Igor was the son and heir of Rurik I, Prince of Novorod, Olga's uncle, founder of the Rurik dynasty. After his father's death, Igor came under the tutelage of his uncle Oleg, Olga's father, who had consolidated power in the region, conquering neighboring tribes and establishing the capital in Kiev. This loose tribal federation became known as Kievan Rus, or Kievan Rus, a territory covering what are now parts of Ukraine, Belarus and a part of Russia. Regency After Igor's death in 945, Olga ruled Kievan Rus as regent on behalf of her son Sviatoslav. Little is known about Olga's tenure as ruler of Kiev, but the primary chronicle recounts her accession to the throne and her bloody revenge against the Drevlians for the murder of her husband, as well as some references to her role as leader of the people of Kiev. After Igor's death at the hands of the Drevlians, Olga took the throne because her three-year-old son Sviatoslav was too young to rule. The Drevlians, encouraged by their success in ambushing and killing the king, sent a messenger to Olga proposing that she marry her husband's murderer. Prince Mal 20 Drevlian negotiators sailed to Kiev to convey their king's message and ensure Olga's obedience. They arrived at his court and told the queen the reason they were in Kiev, to report that they had killed her husband and that Olga was to marry Prince Mal. From then on, Olga prepared a strategy of ambushes and successive attacks that culminated in revenge for the barbaric murder of her husband and in full control over the Drevlians. Christianity In the 950s, Olga traveled to Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, to visit Emperor Constantine VII. Once in Constantinople, Olga converted to Christianity with the help of the emperor and patriarch. Although the primary chronicle does not disclose Olga's motivation for her visit or conversion, it gives many details about the conversion process, in which she was baptized and instructed in the ways of Christianity. Christianization of Ukraine 
the process of Christianization of the different peoples who lived in that region of Ukraine, current name of the former Principality of Kievan Rus, took a long time to come to fruition. This was the case with the Principality of Kiev, which was born in the 9th century, and was the center of an empire that ranged from the Black Sea to the Baltic, reaching as far as the Volga River. The Christian faith began to penetrate the region thanks to missionaries who came not only from Byzantium, but also from neighboring territories of the Western Slavs, who celebrated the liturgy in the Slavic language, according to the rite established by Saint Cyril and Methodius and from the lands of Latin West. As an ancient chronicle, called Nestor's Chronicle Povist Vremenic Let, attests, in the year 944 there was already a Christian church dedicated to the prophet Elijah in Kiev. It was in this favorable environment that Olga was baptized, freely and publicly, in the year 955, remaining always faithful to her baptismal promises. The ceremonies for his formal reception in Constantinople are described in detail by Emperor Constantine VII in his work De Ceremonialis. During her baptism, Olga adopted the name Yelena, Helena, in honor of the reigning Empress Helena Lekapina. Olga, the first Ukrainian saint included in the Byzantine Catholic calendar, is considered the link between pagan and Christian times in the history of Slavic populations. The sources that cite her are numerous and all of historical relevance. Olga prayed day and night for the conversion of her son and his subjects. When the regency ended, according to the laws of the time, he retired to his private activities, continuing the works of his apostolate. He built a few churches, including one dedicated to the Hagia Sophia in Kiev. She lived piously and died at nearly 80 years of age on July 11, 969. Her biographer wrote of her, before baptism, her life was marred by weaknesses and sins, cruelty and sensuality, however, she became saint not so much by her own merit, but by a special plan of God for the people. His grandson, Vladimir, and the new converts experienced the beauty of the liturgy and religious life of the Church of Constantinople. There was the Church of the East and the Church of the West, each of them had developed according to their own traditions, disciplines and liturgical traditions, but there remained full communion between East and West, between Rome and Constantinople, which maintained reciprocal relations. And it was the undivided Church of East and West that received and helped the Church of Kiev. Grand Duke Vladimir realized that there was this unity of the Church and Europe, and therefore maintained relations not only with Constantinople, but also with the West and with Rome, whose bishop was recognized as the one who presided over the communion of the entire Church. Veneration for Saint Olga began during the rule of her grandson Vladimir. In 996, he had his grandmother's relics transferred to the Church he had built especially to receive them. His cult was confirmed by the church, maintaining the liturgical feast on the same day that his death occurred. On April 17, 1075, in a letter addressed to King Demetrius, and to the queen his wife, Pope St. Gregory VII declared the Kingdom of Kiev, Kingdom of Ukraine, under the protection of St. Peter. In 1240 the Mongols invaded and completely destroyed Kiev. 400 years later, the city's metropolitan bishop, Pedro Mogila, ordered the restoration of the old destroyed churches, and the relics of St. Olga were found. But since 1700 there has been no news about the whereabouts of his remains. Death According to the primary chronicle, Olga died of illness in 969, shortly after the Pechenegs siege of the city. When Sviatoslav announced plans to transfer his throne to the Danube region, an ill Olga convinced him to stay with her during her final days. Three days later, she passed away and everyone in Kievan Rus cried. Sviatoslav announced to his mother and the boyars, I do not want to remain in Kiev, but I would prefer to live in Perias Levet on the Danube, since that is the center of my kingdom, where all the riches are concentrated, gold, silks, wine, and various fruits from Greece, silver, and horses from Hungary and Bohemia, and from the furs of Rus, wax, honey, and slaves. Three days later Olga died. Her son wept for her with great grief, as did her grandchildren and all the people. She was buried in Kiev. Olga had given the order not to hold the funeral, as she had a priest who would perform all the ceremonies. His tomb remained in Kiev for more than two centuries, but was destroyed by Batu Khan's Mongol Tatar armies in 1240. Family and Descent From the marriage between Saint Olga, Princess of Kiev and her cousin Igor I, Grand Duke of Kiev, my 35th grandfather, six times my grandfather, were born. 
Zviatoslav I, Grand Duke of Kiev, my 34th grandfather, six times my grandfather, who married Predslava of Hungary, and then married Malusha Malkovna, my 34th grandmother, six times my grandmother winking smiley. Gleb, 